Well, it is a pleasure and thank you for joining us on the Coffee Court where we digest one of the most important arms of government. Of course, I understand that one of the arms of government through which we thrive and survive is the judiciary. Just of recent, the Chief Justice came out and asked the President to actually look through the budget allocation. The President did say that judiciary can survive and thrive given the limited resources. The questions we ask ourselves this time around whether it is possible to achieve justice given the limited law resources in this country. And joining me to discuss this is the former president of the Uganda Law Society. She is also a senior counsel that is none other than Fiona Navasa Awori. <laughs> Awori, senior counsel. Thank you for finding time to speak to us. Thank you so much for having me, Mr. Makuria. Good well. to be here. Thank you. What does it take to train a lawyer? Ah, <laughs> it takes a lot. It's one of the longest courses at the university for four years. Mm. Um, depending, I think, uh, depending in common law jurisdictions, it's usually four years. Um, then you have to have what we call a bar course. Some jurisdictions just do a bar exam, mm. but you have a lot of intensive study. But in Uganda, it's a nine-month course, so that's, so that's almost five years of training. Mm -hmm. uh, then you get enrolled. Okay. And uh, so it, 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 it takes a lot. Uh, education right now, university education is getting more and more expensive. Mm -hmm. So, but then also, as you've said, you, you, you said to educate a lawyer. It takes some time. It takes some time. And, and we, call, we, call, we are called learned friends because we are always learning. So in order for me to practice annually, I have to do what we call continuing legal education, continuous legal education. So every year I have to train for 20 hours. So the process of learning never ends. Never ends. Never ends. Yes. Let's go straight and discuss matters of national importance. Yes. The judiciary... The president came out and responded to the chief justice that you can operate given the limited resources. Mm. Is it possible that we can achieve justice given the mandate, the responsibilities, the luggage that you have and surely be able to execute justice with a low budgetary allocation? Well, we must understand that uh, we will always have limited resources. That's a fact of life. We can never have enough we money. We can never have enough money. But um, there's what we call co the, the priorities. And uh, something exciting happened about three years ago, two, three years ago. Uh, the Parliament of Uganda passed the Judiciary Administration Bill, which was allowing the judiciary to be uh, self-financing, should I say independent financially, mm. And it was also enhancing uh, the pay of judicial officers. It was enhancing the powers of the chief justice. It was setting up the Judiciary Council uh, as a form of sort of self-governance of the judiciary. Uh, and the, the sole purpose of this, be, this act was to increase the independence of the judiciary. When we look at the three arms of government, we have parliament, and Parliament, as we speak right now, it is it 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 uh, it manages its own budget. Okay. It, it manages its resources. It's mm. taught, it's very independent. Mm. Uh, the executive is independent. Of of course, the executive and Parliament check each other. Okay. Now, in the past, uh, the judiciary was uh, dependent on these two organs mm. for for their well being. Okay. And that caused many problems. For many years, we did not have, we had courtrooms without lawyers, sorry, without judges, without, you know. And we still do, we still have uh, a gap. Uh, we're supposed to have a certain number of judges, we don't have enough at, from the High Court, Supreme Court, Court of Appeal. So when this bill was passed, uh, at an annual law, at a new law year, like what we saw recently, mm -hmm. The Chief Justice presented his budget for the first time, his budget uh, priorities. The President approved them, and this was supposed to be an incremental growth towards the judiciary that we want to see. 
And I must applaud uh, government, His Excellency, and the judiciary. The Chief Justice has really done a lot to advocate for this. Mm. Uh, but as we were trying to strengthen the judiciary, certain gaps came up. And these gaps that came up were, for instance, if when we started getting more recruitment of, of judges, we realized that, oh, we don't have enough prosecutors. Okay. You remember the prosecutors were also doing, uh, there was a strike for prosecutors because of, of low salaries. Prosecutors were now all applying to the judiciary for jobs. Mm. As we speak, there are st still some prosecutorial positions that have not yet been replaced because a lot of them have now shifted to where what we call the cheese moved. So if you have, uh, we have about 65,000 inmates in Luzera, sorry, in all the prisons in, 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 in the country, and about 33,000 of these are on bail. So 33,000 people need a day in court. You all of them? All of them need a day in court. In fact, some of them have been on remand for 10 years, 8 years. It's, it's terrible. But this is because there were not enough um, court sessions to hear them all. Okay. There are not enough magistrates, there are not enough uh, prosecutors. Now even if you have many courts and many magistrates and judges, you don't have prosecutors. Are you trying to say we don't have enough manpower? So, yeah, manpower, when you talk about budget, we're talking about manpower and infrastructure. Okay. And right now we do not have enough manpower in the judiciary, in the prosecutor's office, and also in the aspect of legal aid. Every year I can, if, if you know, Uganda Law Society, for instance, was running a legal aid project. So why, why, why do I say legal aid? There is a huge section of people that need their day in court but cannot afford. Mm. And the Constitution of Uganda talks about the right to representation. So that's why lawyers under the Law Council provide free legal services to the poor. But even that uh, project, a lot of it was donor funded, and we know that this donor funding has gone away. Mm. So there is a huge crunch right now in the access to justice space. Okay. The Muntuawansi, our question should be is he getting justice with the limited resources? Maybe before you get there, is every day, every year I see universities graduating people, yes. and you're suggesting we do not have enough manpower. Isn't this. <laughs> You see, uh, okay, let me give you a picture of how there the situation is. We have 12 universities that are releasing about 1,000 lawyers a year each. That's about 12,000 lawyers. Mm. Now, the Law Development Center, you cannot practice law unless you have gone to the Law Development Center. True. It's a monopoly. So it's in three districts, and annually, I think they have, they have the capacity. I don't know whether they've ever actually graduated that many, but annually they have the capacity to graduate only 1,500 lawyers. Okay. Remember, 12,000 entered the market, I don't only 1,500 have. But even those 1,500, we saw the failure rates recently, so, so that's not even a, a, mm. a, a what? That's not a sure deal. Okay. So we have people that are now in the system, they are called lawyers, but they cannot practice, they cannot get jobs in certain offices. Uh, the beautiful thing with, I think, the judiciary and the DPP, they might take you on before you enroll, but okay. you have to have gone to LDC. It's a must. It's a must. So because of that, uh, we do have a lot of manpower, but where is the money to pay the manpower? When you, when you hire a, ja, a magistrate and take, send him to Cotido, you have to get him a car, you have to get him a place, Maybe he has to get a place to stay. Mm. Uh, he has to have a clerk in the court. He has to have... So these are the manpower issues that come with budgetary needs. So the issue is not that we don't have enough lawyers. We actually have enough lawyers. But the, pro <coughs> the program that the Chief Justice had come up with was going to provide employment to about 400... If, if, if every sub-county were to have a magistrate, okay. <clears throat> how many sub-counties we, do we have? I think we had about um, 400. I don't know. I, I need to know. Mm. But imagine if every sub-county was to have a magistrate, what that would mean for lawyers. Right now in Uganda, we have about 5,000 lawyers. 
only. Those that practice. Yeah, practice and, and 5,000, I'm being very, very uh, optimistic. Mm. So if we have 5,000 lawyers, that means that one Ugandan, sorry, one lawyer should serve 19,000 people in Uganda. Those, those are so many. There are so many. So already you can see, despite the lawyers, the lawyers are being churned out by LDC are not enough to meet the job market. So LDC needs to, funding access to justice in Uganda needs to also look at expanding mm -hmm. uh, the training at the bar so that we get a good crop, a good number of people. But we also need to look at where are the areas that need some funding. We need some funding for the for the judiciary we need because you know if 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 just if judicial officers are not well paid they're going to take bribes they're going to take i'm not saying when they're well paid they won't take bribes but <coughs> it's but when you pay when you, when you pay them very well yeah mm. then then you have prosecutors prosecutors need to be paid well facilitated well uh, right now they are overworked and underpaid and oh, we are losing all the good ones now to other sections of the government. In fact, and then, mm. and then, then the aspect of legal aid, because a prosecutor stands for government of Uganda, but legal aid. Now the reason some people are in, in on remand for all those years is because a prosecutor has so many files. They've never looked at the files of these people who've been lost, in, who who are maybe taken away for idle and disorderly, and mm. they got lost in the system. Mm. And maybe even became adults. Maybe they started out as children in Camp Piringisa. Okay. So we need to understand that access to justice is a big need for the Ugandan people. It's a big right that is guaranteed by the, by the Constitution. But our budgets as a country need to reflect this priority. It's a shame, it's a crying shame that mm. a whole... Parliament now is at is at almost nine or ten percent of the Uganda of Uganda's budget, I think, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the judiciary has not even reached one percent, so and yet say, it's a whole arm of government. And I'm not talking about judiciary; I'm talking about the whole justice the whole section. Justice. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so we need we need the budget to reflect our priorities. Must we say that the judiciary is not taken as a priority in this country? Well. You can tell priorities from where you put your money, right? Mm. I think that if we, if we uh, in the last three years, priority. things have greatly uh, improved. I will applaud uh, the president and all the people that are involved. They've greatly improved because the last, the last time, I think now they're working on the, the DPP, the DPP's office. They're working on recruiting and, and trying to fill the gaps I've talked about because mm. I gave you a history. But we still need to see it as a priority. Uh, it's very disturbing when you see certain sections. Uh, if, if, for instance, you are, there are certain things that are that can be viewed as a luxury, mm. but the issue of justice, the issue of health, these are these are, priorities. Critical these are life or death situations, and they need to be prioritized. And I will, you, you show me your priorities, I'll show you your budget. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, in your preamble, you talked about. So you have to put your money where you. Where mouth it, your is. mouth is. Yes. You talked about the new law, which most lawyers have asserted that the new law came with so many privileges, yes. especially when it comes to just an appointment of one chief. Could it be the reason why maybe we are lamenting over uh, the low budget allocation for the judicial I, I service think, system? I think that the, the, the law was made with very good intentions. There are areas where it could be amended and made better, but let's first implement this one. Okay. Because there are many things that the law introduced and there are many things that have been agreed to by the judiciary and the executive and have been presented to parliament and passed. Mm. For instance, the issue of having a magistrate at every sub-county is very, very important because if at any sub-county I know I can get my case there, if they decentralize the court of appeal the way they wanted to, because mm. our villagers in, in, eh, in the Kauku, in where, they don't know court of appeal. So when he loses a case and his lawyer tells him, let's take it to court of appeal, or when he wins a case and they mm. say the other person has appealed mm. in court of appeal in Kampala, it is a very alien concept to them. 
most of them give up at that level. So we want to see how do we support, how does government support the judiciary in ensuring that access to justice reaches mm -hmm. everywhere. Because when people know their rights, they're able to, let me, let me give you an example. We have about four trillion shillings stuck in commercial court because of, uh, what is it called? Because of backlog, mm, many cases. because of few judges, because of limited manpower, limited resources. There are land cases that are stuck because they are waiting for money to be released just to go to the site mm. for a magistrate, or sorry, for a judge to make a decision. Now, if your land is stuck in litigation for 14 years, on average, these land cases take about 14 years. Mm. If your land case is stuck in court for 10 to 14 or 8 to 14 years, and the judiciary has really worked hard in cleaning out this backlog, but they still have a huge one because of COVID. Mm. So you will find that you cannot develop your land. So even our economic, and I think that we need to realize that our economic future mm. is tied up in this thing we are calling access to justice. Why? If my land is stuck for 14 years, it means for 14 years the investor cannot invest in Uganda. So it's actually redundant. For 14 business, years no. you cannot produce, you cannot manufacture, you cannot do the things you hoped to do. For 14 years that, that money that is stuck, that, that trillion, that money that I'm talking about, cannot enter the e ecosystem to, to, to take care of things mm. so that people get money, you know, so are you people saying, get liquid. Are you saying if the judiciary was given the money that it requires? It would probably have a huge multiplier effect on the development of our economy. Let me give you an example. Singapore was at our same development level in 1963, Uganda and Singapore at the same economic level. But there are certain things Singapore has done. For instance, they've taken, you, they, don't, they, don't take, they don't put commercial disputes in court. All commercial disputes now are sent to arbitration. Okay. Arbitration takes 90 days. And, and it's very hard to appeal, to appeal uh, an arbitration because usually the, the, the things are very, the law is very clear, the things are stringent. Mm. And so they've, they've, they've worked out a very efficient system of dispute resolution. Okay. And it is one of the success stories, one of the reasons Singapore is now a first world country. So it's these two countries this. started at the same level in 1963. But I can tell you that dispute resolution is a serious hindrance uh, to Uganda's development, economic development. Okay. Yeah. And maybe, Councillor, as we plan to wind up, are you suggesting that maybe the president is not uh, concentrating on the issues that you think? No, I think that, I, I think that as, law, as judges, as lawyers, as the judiciary, as arms of government, we need to stop speaking as from our point of view. Okay. When we speak to His Excellency, we need to speak to the economic impact of the decisions we are we are asking him to speak to 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 speak to. Okay. And we we, we, we should not just say you know we need money here and here and here and this is what it will do. We need to look at NDP three National Development Plan three once A B C D. Other countries have achieved this A, B, C, D like this. Okay. And we are also saying, let's also increase our money in this area because these are the results we will get. Okay. Yeah. Because these 33,000 people that are locked up in prison, that are on endless remand, these are families. These are 33,000 families that you've, you've sentenced to poverty. Mm. We are fighting poverty. Mm. If, 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 the, if the DPP were to be given special money and told that go to Luzira, go to all the prisons, get every file where you have no evidence and, 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 and put what we call a nolle prosecute, say mm -hmm. that you cannot, you don't want to prosecute. Okay. And they do that. And maybe they clean the prisons of maybe 10,000 people. Okay. That would have a multiplier effect on the economy. So if more money is allocated for the judiciary? We need more money to be allocated for the judiciary. At least, at the very least, they should try and aim for the... Because look at... My question is, how much input do we get out of 540 parliamentarians? Why are we using that many? When we don't even have that many judicial officers? We don't. 
So we need that many judicial officers because we know what we'll get out of the judicial officers. If we had five parla if we had a parliament of five people, or we had a parliament of ten people, or a parliament of five hundred people, they are going to do the same thing. The output is the same. So we'd rather have more. So we'd rather have more judges because judicial service access to justice is a critical aspect of everyday life. But maybe you senior lawyers in the practice have been silent about this. You see, we have not you been see, silent. On the side of parliament, if there's an issue, <laughs> I know. all of them will come together yes. with their head. But, but when you see, the, the parliamentarians sometimes have strength because they have the people's mandate. So when you I also speak, do. I speak with everybody's mandate. No, I'm just developing a point here. But the judiciary for a long time has been viewed by parliament with suspicion, by executive with suspicion, and with disrespect. We have seen government disobeying court orders of parliament. Mm -hmm. We have seen uh, parliamentarians, we've seen there's a time that uh, a former speaker refused to go to court to, to, when they were summoned. Mm -hmm. So that, that disrespect of the judiciary has gone on for a long time. And we need a, a voice from the executive to say this arm is important. We need to strengthen this arm. It's when you're cooking the masiga, mm. the three cooking stones. If you weaken one, everything dies. Okay. When you see the executive disobeying a court order, it undermines the strength and the integrity of the judiciary. Mm. So we need to work together because this judiciary will work for us. It's the one that will force the implementation of parliament's laws mm. and interpret, interpret them. It's the one that will check the executive powers. But it's also the one that will protect both arms of government. Mm. So I think that, uh, for instance, if parliament, I, I always think if, the, if parliament were to, to be told that this year we cannot do parliamentary petitions because we don't have a budget, I am sure they would the, do the, something the, about the, it. There will be, exactly. be issues in the so country. So yes, His Excellency is right. He has a limited envelope in which to, you know. But I think that it's now a duty of the parliamentarians of Uganda to understand the value. Parliamentarians always understand the value immediately after elections. But before that, nothing. So we need to understand that this is for all Ugandans, not just lawyers. Okay. It's important to every person for our courts to work. Well, that is the coffee court. Cancel your parting shot as we plan to wind up. My parting shot is we need to stop looking at our, at our problems in silos. We need to look at if we are dealing with access to justice, who are the players? Who are the beneficiaries? And how does this fit into our NDP3? Mm. And then what are we doing about it? Do our budgetary priorities reflect this? Do the things, the papers in parliament, you know? There's so many bills in parliament that have not been passed like the legal aid bill for 12, 13, 14 years. Mm. Yet they are busy passing other things like Computer Misuse Act which amendments, mm. which mm. have been declared illegal by the courts of law. Mm. So you see, you see a government where certain arms are going left, others are going right. Okay. So we need to work together as a country for the, for the achievement of, uh, of the aspirations that we have in the 1995 constitution. Okay. Yes. Council, thank you for finding us time to speak to us, especially on matters regarding law in this country. Of course, the judiciary still remains one of those fundamental key pillars. Yeah. If our country, Uganda, is to develop. This is the Coffee Court and my name is Fred Akubia.